This is a podcast by the Business Times. Welcome to BT Podcasts, audio for you by the Business Times. I'm your host, Chris Lin. In this episode, we'll be discussing ESG and property investing, how sustainable developments can save you money. This episode is brought to you by M Plus S. Our guest is Ong Chun Fa, CEO of Edmund Tai & Company. Welcome to the show, Chun Fa. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. Now, environmental, social and governance, or ESG, is an increasingly important theme for retail investors. What's ESG's impact been on the Singapore property market and how will the impact continue to evolve? Well, indeed, Chris, as you've mentioned, ESG is becoming increasingly important at the global level. I think as reflected by climate change and even the pandemic that we are in. In fact, our Prime Minister has mentioned that this is really something that we need to look into. In fact, Singapore is warming twice as fast in the last decade. So it is for each and every one of us that we need to do our part. So some of the global investors, in fact, have pledged to ESG investing that sustainability is one huge factor that features in ESG. And we're also finding retail investors now looking into it and the whole of government as well. In fact, the government just released a green plan last month, the Green Plan 2030, where we set ambitious sustainability targets for the whole country. And this is something that we all need to do, whether we are retail investors, whether we are corporates, whether we are individuals. So this will impact the way we work, live and play. For instance, a 20-minute town or to reduce our waste landfill by 30% by 2030. And for retail investors, sustainability is not just an agenda that we want to go by, but it also boils down to the investment return. For instance, there's new technologies now, whether we're talking about harvesting the rainwater using motion-activated LED lightings, and many other technology that we can employ. And some of them is just plain sighting of how you sight the development so that it catches the wind or so that it doesn't get so much sunlight. So it reduces the energy load. So all these translates to dollars and cents. So we have seen very high end, for instance, developments that really doesn't cost that much because they have all these sustainability features being built in. Sustainability is important, not just because it contributes to climate change and each of us should be doing our part. Sustainability also contributes to the bottom line for investors and occupiers, owners itself, because a sustainable development usually reduces the cost of maintenance by reducing, for instance, the energy that is required. Example would be, let's say for Marina One residences, they have reduced the energy load by 35% through various means, whether it is the use of motion-activated lighting, harvesting of your rainwater and so on. So this really enables the manager to reduce the cost of running the development and so it increases the returns to the investors or even to the owner-occupiers themselves. I find it very interesting that you mentioned some of these sustainable elements. For example, Arena One residences are passive in the sense that once you cite the development intelligently, the savings are actually accrued passively. It's not a high-tech solution. You know, wind, you mentioned wind, so wind tunnels. I think there's a green heart sort of in the middle of Marina One residences. So that's passively driven. Once it's been built, actually that feature is then passive money saver in the sense that it's not connected to electricity or some high-tech solution. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right, Chris. So a lot of sustainability is not just all about technology, but it's also about doing things a smart way. So the way you cite your development so that you get light, but you don't get so much of that, let's say the heat load that comes on, or you get cross ventilation. In fact, during the pandemic now, increasingly we find that having cross ventilation is actually healthy. And you mentioned about the green heart. That's really interesting because research has also shown that, you know, increasingly when we work from home or even when you work in the office, looking at nature, looking at the green contributes to our mental health and wellness. And of course, in the green heart, you all can always go and jog. You can go and exercise. There's a pool there. And so all these contributes to 
not just the physical, but the mental health and wellness as well. And I was pleasantly surprised, actually, that sometimes when I go down over the weekend, I do see families at the Green Hut, and there they're just enjoying the greenery, the waterfall, the features, making purposeful trip there with their children. So good for the residents, and I think it's good for the community. If you like BTA Podcast so far, please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, and like us and give us a rating. And now back to our conversation with Ong Chun Fa, CEO of Edmund Tai and Company, about ESG and property investing, how sustainable developments can save you money. This episode is brought to you by M plus S. Now, before the break, we're talking about ESG and sustainability in particular. Interesting points that sustainability is not just about high-tech solutions or energy-consuming solutions. Some of them are passive, such that once they've been made, as in those parts of the developments are made, the benefits accrue passively. One example was the Green Heart, which saw this greenery lifestyle center in the middle of Marina One Residences that is something for all residents and of course for families to enjoy uh, there is I think you mentioned cross ventilation what is cross ventilation Chunfa? I think it's what we have been used to in the old days which is you open up your windows so that the wind can actually flow right through your building so it gives you a gentle breeze and you get fresh air all the time and I think the air quality in Singapore is generally good so we don't have to be concerned about that And in many of these developments where they take on the landscaping, more of this grandscaping and the greenery around, you actually get very good quality of air. So it's really opening it up so that you get fresh air all the time. And this is very important for health. I think we all know now with the pandemic how important it is. And not having to turn on the aircon is major, major accumulated day in, day out energy savings. So that's a big deal. To have enough ventilation then to not have to worry about aircon is a big deal in Singapore. So as part of the ESG theme, how does sustainability figure into the actual real estate purchasing decisions in Singapore? Do buyers favor sustainably designed properties? Do people think about these things and actually place a premium on these things when shopping around for properties? I think while while investors at the retail level may not think specifically of sustainability, I think usually when buyers buy properties, the top consideration is about location. What is the location? Does it suit my purpose? What kind of lifestyle am I looking for? And how big is the premise? How big is the apartment? So these are the things that they usually look for. But we find very often that sustainable developments actually go a step further than just providing these by really looking at the long-term life cycle of the building and they look at what is it that appeal to the occupants, whether you're an owner-occupier or whether you're a tenant. Because at the end of the day, sustainability comes in many forms. It's not just the financial sustainability. It's not just the environment sustainability. It's also sustainability. You know, we talked about social earlier about the community. So it's really very human-centric way of looking at things too. And you also save on your transport. You walk everywhere. So it is a very holistic way of looking at a property. So I think all these other attributes actually appeal to many of the buyers, although they may not say it is sustainability, but behind it are the principles of sustainability. That's a great point, Chunfa. Sustainability, I mean, it's a term, but many people may actually have the benefits in mind without actually attaching that label to it, you know, just like green. I mean, 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, you know, parents would say, you know, don't waste things. Don't throw them away. We didn't label it as green, but that is one element of green thinking. Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at back in the 1960s, our founding prime minister started tree planting day. So that's green, that's sustainable. And during those days, we're talking about making Singapore a garden city. And today we're talking about having Singapore as a city in a garden. And the garden is good for us, but we don't really say it's sustainable, but we know that that's the right thing to do and it's good for us. So I think while we may not specifically put a label that this is sustainable, we are actually going for it. Interesting you mentioned, so we've got a garden in the city and in some of these integrated developments, you've got a garden within the development. I mean, we talked about Marina One Residences and the Green Heart, which is sort of this garden area in the middle of development. So again, you've got a further microcosm 
it's a garden city and you've got these developments with gardens inside them as well. I mean, that sounds like a good way to live. And you mentioned cost savings are not just about upfront savings, but long term, you mentioned life cycle savings. Some of these savings need to be figured in looking with a wider time horizon then, would you say? Yes, yes. And I think increasingly, many of the developers are all adopting this mindset because it's corporate social responsibility as well to do the right thing, to be part of this movement. And in fact, by the, our Green Plan 2030, part of the Green Plan is to plant a million trees by then. And for us in Edmonton, you know, we have been marketing residential as well. And what we find is that landscaping really adds value. No, landscape is not just planting a few trees and plants here and there, but it's very thoughtfully laid out from the occupier's perspective. And we find that our buyers, our tenants really value that. Thanks for being on the show, Chunfa. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. We've been discussing ESG and property investing, how sustainable developments can save you money with my guest, Ong Chunfa, CEO of Edmund Tyne Company. This episode was brought to you by M plus S. And that's a wrap for this podcast episode by The Business Times. That was an SBH podcast by The Business Times. Find us on Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts or streaming on Google Home. Do feedback to us at podcast.sbh.com.sg. You can also check out more podcasts on various topics at The Straits Times, The Business Times and Money FM 89.3. Any financial or investment information in this podcast is for use in Singapore only and is intended to be for your general information. Any particular investment or decision should only be made after consulting with a fully qualified financial advisor.